Here are some quick questions to help you test your knowledge for AQA GCSE Biology Paper 2. If you haven't seen the full video going through everything you need to know for the paper, it's worth watching that first. Link in description. And don't forget to check out the Science Shorts app to help you test your knowledge. Let's go. Question 1. What's the difference between a conscious response and a reflex? Use the names of the parts of the nervous system involved. A conscious response to a stimulus involves the signal going from the receptor, say skin for example, through a sensory neuron to relay neurons up the spinal cord to the brain. You make the decision to act and then a signal goes back via relay and motor neurons to an effector, say the muscles in your arm. A reflex arc is similar, but the difference being that the signal goes straight through the spinal cord to the motor neurons and effector, bypassing the brain. You act before you even realise what's happened. Question 2. What do stimulants and depressants do, and how do they work? Also, give an example of both. A stimulant will decrease your reaction time or improve your reactions. It increases the rate at which neurotransmitter chemicals are released across the synapses between neurons. An example would be caffeine. A depressant does the opposite. It impairs your reactions. It reduces the amount of neurotransmitters crossing the synapse. An example is alcohol. Question 3. What changes in your eye in order for it to focus on a distant object, and what is this called? This is accommodation. To focus on far objects, the ciliary muscles relax, the suspensory ligaments tighten, and these cause the lens to become thinner, so light refracts less, focusing it on the retina. So it refracts light less, focusing it on the retina. The opposite is of course true for when focusing on near objects. Question 4. Give two ways your body responds when it's hot and when it's cold. Also, what is this called? The ability for your body to control its internal temperature is called thermoregulation. It's an example of homeostasis. When hot, sweat glands produce sweat, which evaporates from the surface of your skin. Your blood vessels also dilate, they get wider. This increases the blood flow to your skin, allowing heat to be lost at a greater rate. When cold, vasoconstriction occurs. The blood vessels get thinner, reducing the blood flow, therefore reducing the rate of heat loss. Also, your hairs stand on end, trapping an insulating layer of air between them and your skin. You could have also said shivering, which causes your muscles to produce more heat. Question 5. What do glands do, and what is the master gland? glands are part of your endocrine system. They secrete or produce hormones, which then affect another part of your body, say another organ. The pituitary gland can be thought of as the master gland found in your brain. It responds to changes in your body and environment, say temperature, and secretes hormones that cause other glands in your body to do the same. Question 6. How does your body respond to high and low blood glucose levels? When blood glucose or sugar levels are high, the pancreas secretes insulin, which causes the glucose to enter cells from the bloodstream to be used for respiration. Excess glucose is converted into glycogen as a store of energy. When blood glucose levels are low, the pancreas instead secretes glucagon, which causes the liver and muscles to convert glycogen back into glucose. Question 7. What do the kidneys do and which hormone affects them? Your kidneys remove excess water from the blood. It's mixed with urea, which contains ammonia, to make urine. That's then excreted via your bladder. They also filter out glucose and other useful mineral ions for your body to use. ADH, or antidiuretic hormone from the pituitary gland, causes the kidneys to reabsorb water into the bloodstream. If your water levels are too high, less ADH is made and more water goes to the bladder. Question 8. What do the hormones thyroxine and adrenaline do? Thyroxine controls your metabolic rate. It's secreted by your thyroid, which is controlled by the hormones TRH and TSH, made by the hypothalamus and pituitary glands in your brain, respectively. Adrenaline, made by the adrenal glands atop your kidneys, increases your blood flow and breathing rate. Question 9. What are the four main hormones involved in the menstrual cycle and what do they do? FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, causes an egg to mature and it also causes the ovaries to produce oestrogen that causes the uterus lining to thicken and inhibits FSH so you only get one egg maturing per cycle. 
Estrogen also causes LH, luteinizing hormone, to be produced, which causes the egg to be released. Finally, progesterone maintains the uterus lining. Question 10. What do gibberellins, ethene, and auxins do? Gibberellins induce germination, promote flowering, and increase fruit size. Ethene promotes the ripening of fruit. Auxins are growth hormones in plants. In shoots, they promote growth and elongation of cells. Sunlight destroys it, causing the shaded side to grow faster, which makes the plant point towards the sun. This is phototropism. Auxins can also be used by us as weed killers and rooting powders. Question 11. What are the stages of meiosis? Meiosis is how gametes are made. The chromosomes in a diploid cell are copied. Similar chromosomes pair up and genes are swapped between them. The cell then divides to produce two diploid cells. They then divide again to produce four genetically different haploid cells, your gametes. Question 12. Describe the structure of DNA. It's a double helix polymer. For triple, you also need to know the bases or nucleotides. A and T always go together, and C and G do too. These are all made from a sugar phosphate group. Every three bases code for an amino acid. The sequence of these determines what proteins are synthesized. Question 13. What is an advantage for sexual and asexual reproduction? The offspring of organisms that reproduce sexually can be better adapted to their environment. Asexual reproduction results in clones being made, of course, but the benefit to this, of course, is that only one organism is needed. Question 14. Here's a Punnett square for parents carrying the recessive gene or allele that causes cystic fibrosis. What's the probability that their child will actually have the disease? In order to have the disease, the child has to have two little c alleles, two recessive alleles. He or she will not only carry the gene, but will have the disease. So that's a 25% probability. Question 15. What do homozygous and heterozygous mean? These refer to the two alleles for a certain gene an organism has. So in our last example, the two parents had heterozygous alleles. They're different. Hetero means different. If the child had little c, little c, or big c, big c, these would both be homozygous instead. Question 16. How do you clone an animal? You take the nucleus from a cell from the animal you want to clone and insert it into the egg cell of another, of the same species of course. You then insert the artificially fertilized egg into a surrogate mother and the clone will develop. Question 17. How do you estimate the population of an organism in a large area? You use a quadrat, place it in random locations in the area and count the number of organisms in those squares. Ideally, you should sample 10% of the total area. Then you calculate the average number of organisms per meter squared, then multiply by the total area to get an estimate of the total population. Question 18. What do food chains and food web diagrams show? They show the direction of biomass or energy transfer between the trophic levels of the food chain or web. Question 19. How do humans impact biodiversity? We as humans use lots of land for building, quarrying and other purposes. Often this requires deforestation. Another thing is that we use peat from peat bogs to make compost. This also reduces biodiversity. Question 20. Why do pyramids of biomass always get smaller going up each trophic level? Biomass is always lost at each level due to the next organism not consuming all of the biomass. And of course they also use energy and excrete biomass as they go about their lives. Leave a like and a comment if you found this helpful. All the best in your exam and I'll see you next time.